Paul Robertson is a youth culture specialist. That's how he's described in the material that was sent to me. And I think that's a pretty good term. He's been working with young people for 35 years, beginning in former years with an organization called Youth for Christ now called Youth Unlimited, and has uh, been much sought after as a speaker, as a seminar uh, leader, uh, as a consultant for various ministries and corporations about understanding youth culture. And so we're going to talk about young people. First of all, welcome, Paul. Thanks, Jim. It's a pleasure to have you. I, I, <clears throat> when I was getting ready for this interview, I, I thought, boy, it's very appropriate having you here in that this is, uh, I'm calling it Father's Day week. Uh, I interviewed David Maines yesterday as a father. I got my own dad coming in a couple days. Father's Day is this coming Sunday, of course. And as I was reading your material, uh, you have a lot to say about, uh, about fathering. In fact, um, there's one sidebar here uh, that um, talks about some research that Youth Unlimited has done about what kids are expecting from their dads. Yeah. And, and, the, and the first thing you say is they expect their dads to ask them how they're doing, how their day was, and then take some time to listen to their answers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think listening is uh, you know, such an important skill. Uh, most people enjoy talking rather than listening. And uh, I think kids have a lot on their hearts, on their minds, but I think as parents, especially as dads, we have to know how to ask good questions if you want your kids to open up. And so often, you know, they walk through the door and you say, how was your day? And they kind of grunt because they're still at that stage where communications is a tough thing for them. Uh, but to, you know, say something like, you know, what was the best thing that happened at school today? And, and to get them to talk during the good times because, you know, uh, when the tough times do come and we want to uh, talk to our kids, they, they need to be comfortable with that whole communication thing. You know, the so. thing about asking good questions is that uh, it means that you're thinking about them. There's, yeah. a, there's some thoughtfulness yeah. there, right? It's, yeah. it's not like uh, just a superficial question. Right, right. And I, I've often thought, you know, if we could, as fathers, just develop our question answering mm -hmm. skill set, you know, become a good interviewer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It really means a lot to a kid to uh, hear a thoughtful question. Um, you talk about kids grunting. Uh, isn't that often the accusation wives make of their husbands that all they do is grunt? Yeah, well, maybe that's where they're learning. It's from us, it's the fathers. <laughs> the grunting father. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a second thing you, you, you found in your research is that kids expect their dads to be consistent mm -hmm. and to model behavior and beliefs that they themselves teach and talk about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've always said that more is caught than taught. Uh, I can remember when my oldest son was about five or six years old. Uh, we were painting. I had the real paint, real rollers. He had the empty paint tray, new paint roller. And so he was doing his thing, I was doing my thing. But I noticed as I watched him that he would take his paint roller, roll it in the empty tray, and then tap it twice and then put the paint on the wall. And so I watched him do this a couple of times and I finally said to him, Ian, why do you tap your paint roller twice? And he said, because you do. I said, I do not. He said, yeah, you do. I said, get back to painting. <laughs> and so then I, I watched, and what I would do is I would put the paint on, then I would tap the roller twice. Because in those days, the rollers had this tendency of sliding off the yeah. end, and that would drive me crazy. Yeah. And so I would tap it twice. And in that moment, God said this to me. It was one of the scariest moments I've had with God. If he notices at age five that you tap your roller twice, what's he going to see in, his, in your life over the next 20, 25 years? Yeah because they learn so much by observation. They learn by seeing. I mean, the bottom line is we're growing up to be like our parents. Yeah. You know, my dad's 93, he'll be watching this morning, and uh, I learned so much from him just by observation. And uh, that requires we spend time with our kids, which is another whole issue. And, and that, that issue of consistency, too. Uh, what, what, yeah. a, what a father says, you know, publicly yeah. if he's not uh, performing privately, a yeah. kid sees the gap. Uh, oh, exactly. Uh, they pick up a hypocrite at 100 paces of what I say. Yeah, yeah and uh, you know, we need to model what it is so that we want our kids to become. And certainly consistency is so important. But it's a tough culture out there for our kids and even for dads. And I think dads, is, you know, I think it's a heroic profession. I think it's something that uh, is, is so worthy and yet in the culture, and especially in the culture of media, dads are often belittled. Dads are shown to be the, the goofy guy in all the sitcoms. And I understand from a brain development reason why they do that. I mean, kids uh, think that their fathers don't know anything, and, and that's just a common stage that they go through. Isn't that the way it is yeah. with advertising? I mean, I, oh, yeah. I, I, nine times out of ten, if there's a family situation mm -hmm. in, an, in an ad, the yeah. father is a doofus. Yeah. Yeah, great word. The kids are really smart, uh, yeah. the, the mother is yeah. kind of cynically rolling her eyes, and the father's a total idiot. Yeah, and I think for us as dads that, you know, that wears on us. I think there's a, a cultural factor where dads are never portrayed in a positive light. 
And I think that comes through media, it comes through advertising, and I think there's a certain point where, you know, too many dads begin to believe that. And I think dads underestimate the influence and the power that they have in the lives of their kids. Yeah. You mentioned in your research that uh, kids are looking for unconditional love from their mm -hmm. fathers. Sure. And, and a lot of fathers do love their kids conditionally. Yeah. Yeah. You, well, you, you perform what I say, I'll love you. If you don't, you're in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago, Alanis Morissette had a song called Perfect. And it was her story of her growing up. And it was basically the message was, I know that you'll love me as long as I'm perfect. But what happens when I'm not perfect? And, and there are no perfect parents. There are no perfect fathers. There are, are no perfect children. And so we need to, to learn how to, to deal with those things and to be forgiving. Mm. And then a, a final point before we move on. Uh, in your research, you discovered that kids want guidance, but they also mm -hmm. want freedom. And, yeah. and there is a, a kind of a dynamic tension there from a parent's perspective, isn't yeah, it? Because exactly. uh, you, you don't want your kids to make mistakes that you made, perhaps, and so yeah. you may be over-controlling. Right. But you have to learn that fun, delicate balance as a dad between guiding them and letting them go. Sure, yeah. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about not exasperating our children. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Eugene Peterson, the message, his version says, we need to walk hand in hand with them. And how do we do that as, as fathers? I think one of the most important roles that we play in the lives of our kids, next to just making sure we spend lots of time with them, is what you know, one author called the principal guide. That, that our role as dads are to teach our children right from wrong, to know the boundaries, to set up the boundaries, and then, more importantly, to enforce them. Because you, know, you and I talked in the green room, I said boundaries are a simple way of saying to your children, I love you. Mm -hmm. I care enough about you that I will go head to head with you if I have to. To, to get your behavior to where it is. I tried to teach my four boys that everything they said, everything they do, is all about uh, their character. Everything you do is a reflection of your character and what kind of young men do you want to grow up to be.